We are here today in um, honor of the service of our veterans. Um, there's over 300,000 veterans within the state of Oregon, more than 29,000 in Clackamas County, and there's 149 known homeless veterans. Um, I also want to acknowledge that we have veterans in our county workforce, making meaningful impacts in every department on county services and infrastructure. So Clackamas County has established some goals for veterans, um, employment training and education opportunities so that veterans can obtain living wage jobs, easy access to VA benefits through the County Veterans Service Office, and also that homeless veterans have the services and supports needed to regain stable housing. This year I want to focus on the work of the Clackamas County Veterans Service Officers, and they are Janice Harlan, Heather Mewald, Gina Thomas, and Felicia Ridings, and Jackie Bauer is the very competent office assistant. All our veteran service officers are accredited through the Oregon Department of Veterans Affairs. They have to go through extensive training to gain that accreditation, and they also have to go through testing in order to keep their accreditation. So during last fiscal year, they met with uh, 1,776 veterans and family members. They filed 729 initial compensation claims. Um, right now, there's a delay um, due to some changes with the VA system. So the numbers that I'm telling you are actually um, lower than the real numbers, and hopefully uh, that will catch up soon. Um, but they had at least 502 claims granted, and they generated new federal monetary benefits of at least $7.6 million. So um, that's pretty good for about a $700,000 um, initial upfront cost of their office. Um, so that would be, what, a 1,000% return on investment? That's pretty good. Um, so I wanted to tell you a few stories of some of the veterans that have been helped. Um, these stories are very... Um, detailed, but I think they illustrate um, the fine work and the huge difference that these services make. So um, recently, a 97-year-old, a World War II combat veteran, um, he fought in all the major battles from North Africa to Northern Italy. He had a combat infantry badge and five bronze stars. Um, he was rated at only a 10% disability for hearing loss. Um, he had suffered a good part of his life with PTSD, uh, his family back in 2010 had prepared a claim um, for him for his PTSD, um, but that claim was denied. The family helped him appeal, but he was still awarded 0%. Um, so uh, alcohol had been one of his early coping mechanisms, but he quit drinking 40 years ago, and the original VA decision appeared to penalize him for his recovery from alcoholism. And he always felt slighted that the VA did not acknowledge his suffering, and he gave up on trying until this past August. Um, due to his age, the CVSO was able to get him an expedited increase from 10% to 70%, which got him over uh, $1,200 more a month. And he was really happy with a little extra money um, to spend with his family. He finally felt validated for his service in action and the toll that it took on his lives and his relationships. Obviously, he should have been awarded the higher rate much earlier, um, but it was very nice uh, that we were able to help him. And um, now he's got that money in hand every single month. The next one is an 87-year-old Korean War Army veteran. He visited the VSO in June. He was in the infantry, sorry, infantry front lines, and uh, he was the only survivor of his unit of seven in a battle to take a hill. So in the 65 years since his honorable discharge, he had never filed a claim for service-connected disability, despite his hearing literally being shot. The VSO discovered that he had pictures from Korea as well as letters that he had written his father and with details from the front lines. And so these are some quotes from some of those letters. We should have enough firepower to stop them unless those tanks open up on us. We lost three quarters of our marching gun platoon. I guess I am sure lucky to still be alive. 
So a fully developed claim for service-connected disability for both hearing loss and PTSD was filed in July. And due to the VSO's professionalism, attention to detail, and extensive knowledge of the VA rules, less than three months later, this veteran was awarded 100% service-connected disability, uh, which equates to more than $3,000 a month plus one month retroactive. So imagine that, 65 years. Um, the next one, if I can get it to turn, was a um, female Kuwait veteran. She initially filed a PTSD claim in 2007 and related to military sexual assault and being fired on in Kuwait in 2000. She had been in continuous appeals for 10 years when she came to the CVSO and asked us to help her at an upcoming appeal hearing. The CVSO uh, reviewed the previous VA decisions and exams and submitted more records, including a counselor's validation of severe PTSD. The CVSO found a technicality that the VA had made a mistake because they relied on a medical examiner's opinion that her PTSD could not be service-connected because she had only spent a week in, Ku in Kuwait. However, there was a formal report in her file in the uh, military records that uh, her vehicle had been fired upon, and that was evidenced by bullet holes in the vehicle. So at appeal, um, we made that argument, and the board concurred. Um, a new exam was ordered, and the examiner agreed about her PTSD, but that it was mild. However, due to the strong medical evidence submitted by the CVSO, the VA disregarded that examiner's opinion and rated her 50% PTSD from 2007 when she had initially filed her claim to the latest exam and then 100% from the latest exam forward. So just a year since her first visit to the CBSO, her award was $29.73 a month and plus a $92,000 retroactive payment. She said that now she is much healthier. She can afford to go to the VA for helpful workshops and uh, get her much needed dental work taken care of. And she stated, if you're patient enough and work with the system, it can be really rewarding eventually. So those are just three examples. Um, we definitely want to get to the veterans much earlier, you know, than the 95-year-old and the 87-year-old. And so um, with the additional lottery funds that came in uh, this past year, we have added an outreach-focused veteran service officer. And uh, we're focusing on reaching out to medical providers and also directly to the veterans in medical settings about the presumptive conditions from Agent Orange exposure. Um, and we're expanding our capacity to connect with veterans earlier and obviously to maximize their financial benefits and their other benefits. So it's really much uh, more community-based um, and really being out there in as many different settings. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a few other programs um, that I know you're aware of. The Clackamas Veterans Workforce Program and Jennifer Harvey as well as Kenny are both here. Um, down at Community Solutions served 41 veterans, 78% became employed, 75% uh, were still employed at 90 days, and that uh, far exceeded their goal of 55%. The average wage of 16.73 an hour was 19% higher than last year's average, and the jobs included manufacturing, construction, healthcare, uh, transportation, security, retail, customer service, warehouse, the, ho the whole range of jobs. Um, and then ending veteran homelessness, uh, Aaron and Dave, I'm not sure if anybody else is here from that team. Oh, Tito. Um, so social services has three programs and we house 62 homeless veteran households, that's 79 adults and 14 children. Uh, VASH vouchers administered by the Housing Authority more than doubled from last year, um, from 51 up to 106. Elizabeth is here, um, maybe someone else. Um, there's 51 vets currently housed. There's 10 more vouchers that have been issued and that are in the housing search. 
There's 10 on hold for the new Pleasant Avenue Veterans Housing, and there's 35 still available. So um, we're really starting to make a dent, and I'm really proud uh, to be part of this and to be able to um, report that to you. The Veterans Village has sheltered 12 veterans. Um, the first one was just approved for housing. There's, I mean, within those 12 veterans, there's one female, there's three veterans that are 62 and older, there's four people of color, and there's one with a physical disability. So um, all the veterans are vulnerable, but then some of those are also additionally even more vulnerable uh, being out there. And so that safety off the streets that that Veterans Village provides um, really cannot be understated. Um, we were also selected recently by Oregon Department of Veterans Affairs as one of two Oregon counties to pilot a new volunteer veteran outreach program for aging veterans that ODVA has invested in. And the county was selected due to the variety of effective, innovative, and creative ways that we support our veterans. Um, so I listed the contact information for the County Veterans Service Office uh, for anybody that might be watching on the cable network. And I've also listed the contact information for the Veterans Workforce Program. And um, really just want to end with a heartfelt thanks uh, to all of our veterans. Um, I don't know what we would do without you. Thank you very much. Well, I understand that we have a, a number of employees in the audience who are veterans, and would you please stand? Wow. And I'd say we've come a long way from when Paul and I got here a number of years ago with uh, uh, veteran service officers and uh, the services we provide and obviously the revenue that is uh, generated uh, in the county uh, uh, just by the fact that, that they're receiving their benefits. I'm a little shocked to see how old some of these people are before they finally got them. Uh, and probably part of that reason is, is uh, I know that some veterans don't really go uh, or don't believe they deserve the services, which is absolutely not true. Uh, and we're here to help make sure you get what you deserve. And I uh, want to thank Martha for all her efforts over the years and, and Paul and the rest of the commission for uh, making this program uh, appear to be very successful. And uh, we will continue to de dedicate the resources we need to make sure that the veterans uh, receive, you know, the benefits that they deserve. And I, I, I heard a little bit about the one gentleman who has, uh, was in our uh, temporary uh, uh, pods and has been uh, approved for housing. That's pretty quick, uh, considering it's only been open for a few weeks or a month now. So congratulations, uh, Paul, and your efforts to physically move those structures there and uh, anyway uh, you were up first yeah uh, so I have a comment but I have a question first for Erica um, currently if a veteran walks in our VSO office for the first time how let's just say they just abruptly show up can they be served right away or what's currently the waiting list if they can't or the waiting period of time we definitely will uh, do our best However, um, the Veteran Service Office works best on an appointment basis, so um, we can give them some basic information. Um, if we have somebody that's free, we'll definitely see them, but um, it, we really want to make sure that we have the time to devote, um, which is in some cases for the first meeting. It could be one to two hours, depending on what we're going through um, and what their situation exactly is. So um, what we really ask veterans to do is to call in first, and then we'll make sure that we have the time. Um, it's only a week or sometimes even a little bit less than that um, before we can see them. Um, but if they are homeless, um, we will prioritize those, and we'll always try to fit those in either the same day or the next uh, business day. Well, thank you for sharing that. So it was about seven and a half years ago I was going through the um, county college program, and I um, one whole day or session was about veterans and veteran services, and that's what I learned 
about the uh, Lane County, because they about the same size county, they're a little bit smaller, about 50, 60,000 less people than us, but they really had showed a spreadsheet where they returned so many benefits, earned benefits, I will say, by the way, um, back to veterans, and we were substantially lower, but had a higher population. I said, well, what's with that? And they explained that was really our capacity, um, so that the more VSOs we had on hand, the more ability to meet, and I, so I met with our staff and realized that uh, when a veteran walked in for the first time that they were, it was weeks an appointment was required. Now we're a week to a few days, which is far better. So we increased that from two VSOs to then three and now four. So I just, I just want to just acknowledge that that's obviously made a, a substantial difference in the wait times. So that's good to hear. And um, I just want to just uh, applaud our staff's efforts and the boards from the beginning. Um, uh, their support for initiating the VSOs, the Veterans Village, and all the things that we've been doing. So it's, uh, it's just really, very pleasing, especially the fact that our, one of our first residents at the Veterans Village has already found a, um, uh, 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 some housing, so that's fantastic. Great. Martha? Yeah, and that, I just wanted to mention the Veterans uh, Village, because that really is the purpose of it, is to give folks, just um, get some immediacy of getting them off the street, but it's not permanent. The whole focus really is to get people stabilized with uh, a clean place to, you know, have showers and bathrooms, a safe place to sleep that, that has some warmth, a warming area is there, and really to use the resources we have to move them into permanent housing. And I'm hopeful that with the passage of the housing bond that we just had, uh, Clackamas County is working uh, to increase capacity because that's what we need. It's just, it's, we need the there theirs. We need the permanent housing. We need the bridge housing, but we really need to have additional, uh, whether it's public, private, public partnerships, uh, housing for folks uh, from 30% below area medium income, 60% below area medium income, and, and really build that. We just don't have enough units. That's it. So building the units, I think, um, with the passage of this is not only going to help our veterans, which is one of our key priorities, but I think getting people housed uh, across, uh, across the county at this point. And I know Erica has been essential in all of this work, so th thank you, Erica. But I'm going to put a pitch in for you guys, because Dawn, they have four VSOs. They need more room in their office. That should be a top Right? Everybody nod their heads. They need more room. They need to have a, another uh, desk. They need to have a larger uh, area to work in because uh, they do such important work. So I don't know where we are with the facilities expansion, but I sure commissioners like to see that move up to the, the number one spot. So are the people that do the work have the space and the equipment they need to, to really be out there and shine. So thank you. Commissioner Fisher. Thank you. I just want to give a, a compliment to the community of Clackamas County. I think I can speak for all of us when I say that when we are out in the community connecting with our constituents, we all experience a um, much appreciated outpouring of respect, contribution, and care from our citizens in Clackamas County for our veterans. And when we look at upcoming Veterans Day, which is just a few days away, we can reflect and be thankful. We have an incredible democracy. We uh, embrace freedom in this country. And really, it is from the work, the hard work of men and women that serve in our armed forces that we are able to experience the life that we have here in America. And it's very much honored in Clackamas County, we are a community that really cares, and I appreciate everyone out there for that. Thank you. With that, I'd like to thank you for coming, uh, taking the time to come to our meeting, and appreciate your service to the nation.